You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Yes, sir. Did you climb inside of his skin? Walk around in it. But if I keep going to school, we can't ever read anymore. Scouts. You know what a compromise is? That, of course, is a scene from the 1962 film adaptation of Harper Lee's novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, starring Gregory Peck, who played Atticus, and Mary Badham, who played Scout. And we are so lucky today to have her with us in the studio. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank I know you, you said so much, you're sort of living a, in, out of your car right now because you're doing all of this <laughs> traveling. <laughs> traveling, yeah. yeah. Um, thanks so much for having us here today oh, to help with, thrilled. you know, getting people to the theater mm -hmm. and sharing the story with everyone. How much of an honor is that to have not just this and here you are going around the country and doing this kind of thing, but the fact that as we were talking in the last segment, this movie is part of American history. It's yeah. not just in, in film and a novel, but it's part of American history. To be a part of that and to grow up and see that when you start a movie, you don't know what you're going to end up no. with. How, how does it, when does it ever hit you that, wow, this is really something? It's, it, it took a long time. Um, you know, as a kid, you know, you want to be just a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so didn't want to talk about it, didn't want anything. And it wasn't until after I had my daughter mm -hmm. and Professor Inge from our local community college called and he said, would you come and speak with my English Lit class? And I'm like, okay. I didn't know what I was going to talk to his English Lit class about, but <laughs> okay, well, let's meet for lunch tomorrow and we'll discuss how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I go in and um, he said, before I'd even gotten to see it, he's like, so what was your favorite part of the book? <laughs> and I guess he could tell by the look on my face, I hadn't read the book. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Young lady, your first assignment is you go home and read this yeah, book. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then here are all these other characters that I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. And this story that is so wonderful. Um, and after that, it was like that got the ball rolling mm -hmm. and it snowballed. Mm -hmm. I mean, after that, it was like I was on the road a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. at one point I was booked like every month of the year, wow. like sometimes twice or three times a month. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was pretty amazing. That was during the first part of the big read when the big read was just getting started. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, that let me get on my soapbox about the importance of reading oh, and absolutely. going to the library. And Take us back, though, to that time. You were just 10 years old when you did this film, and it, I was reading a little bit about it, you, and you really didn't have much interest in theater. Your mom was no. the one who did, and you said you kind of went into that audition. You beat 4,000 other kids to get this part by really just playing on set. How did that Being happen? Being yourself. Yeah. 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 I mean, I No acting experience. No. Not nothing. You know, I just because I was sort of like an only child, I lived in my imagination. Mm -hmm. Um and and so I would play around. Uh and my girlfriend and I went and tried out for this thing. My mom got a call from James Hatcher, who was the head of the Little Theater, who Mom had worked for before, because um, she was their leading lady for a number of years. And uh, he said to, to bring me in, that I ought to be brought in. And uh, Bodie Boatwright, who was our talent scout, she uh, had called Los Angeles and said, I'm not finding these children, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> Wow. And I want to go back to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, please, Betty, we've got all these children lined up. Please just go to and do Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama. And after that, we promise we'll let you go home. So Bodie did Birmingham, and she found uh, myself and Philip. Uh, and we lived like only four blocks from one another, but we didn't well, know amazing. each other. Huh. Yeah. And neither of us were actors. Uh, so... But that's what they wanted. The, the, the film company was looking for real children, mm -hmm. uh, children with very good imaginations, uh, 
and, and, and children who could um, take direction. Mm -hmm. And really just bring that authenticity yeah. of being a child. And, and they wanted the real Southern children. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't take uh, an actor, a, a child actor from Los Angeles or New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted the real accent. Realism. I love they that. wanted yeah. they wanted it totally real, um, and and they would not have understood the social structure because mm -hmm. Los Angeles mm -hmm. and New York were different. like diff It was like a Worlds different away. planet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we still had at that time the same social structure. Uh, black people still rode on the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. There was the colored only, the white only, uh, men. You know, it was ruled by white males. Uh, was the way the social structure of the day was set up. Uh, so women, children, and servants, you know, had no voice, no say. So they were to be seen but not heard. And that's why this is quite a statement. The movie, yeah. the book was, and then the movie came out to reach even more people as an audience. Right. And it really made people think, and it told a story. And it wasn't right. like looking today back on ancient history. No. It was really a look at a slice of America that you were living in. That you got I was to see living this. in, yeah. And that's, you know, that was part of the reasoning behind getting true Southern children because they would understand the social structure. I had my Calpurnia mm -hmm. who raised yep. me. Uh, Philip had his Calpurnia who raised him. And, and so all of that was very normal for us. Uh, and, you know, you just, you have to understand and to have lived with that in order to, and that's why they were so adamant about getting true Southern mm -hmm. children to do it, mostly for the accent, but also, too, for the social structure, which wouldn't have made any sense to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Talk about, too, I mean, every child pretty much reads this while they're in school now. Yes. And it, it's because of the values, of course, that it yes. teaches in that book. How do you think they're relevant today? It's so relevant today. I mean, if you, if you want to talk about parenting, I don't think there's any better role model than the character of Atticus, mm -hmm. Gregory Peck. Mm -hmm. He was, what you see up on film is what we got at home. I used to go at home with the, the pecs on a weekend. They were and you kept in touch with very him. close with him. And you, you called him Atticus. You didn't, yeah. Uh, yeah through all. And you were I mean, scout. Forever. And I was yeah. scout, yeah. I mean, it's, it, was, it was such a close relationship. Um, and I lost my parents very early in mm -hmm. my life. My mom died three weeks after I graduated from high school. My dad died like two years after I got married. I didn't get married till I was 21 because I promised my dad I wouldn't because I didn't feel like females knew their right mind until they were at least 21. Wow. Uh, but, you know, he, he was such a great role model. Wow. And, and, and all of the, the moral grounding of this book, the way that the uh, basic Judeo-Christian rules that we lived by and we were raised with, uh, that made this country great. Um, that's, um, you know, what we grew up with and we understood. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about the history of L.A. and New York during that same time period of 50s and yeah. 60s, it was radically different. Um, I could not have friendships with people of color when I was growing up. That just wasn't going to happen. Didn't exist. So when I went to Los Angeles, uh, we had friends that were every color, race, and creed. I mean, mm -hmm. it was everything, you know, and we'd go to their house. They'd come to our house. It was nothing for me to go over to Brock and Dee Dee's house, who played mm -hmm. Tom Robinson. Um, it, was, it was really like I had died and gone to heaven wow. because they didn't have all the rules and regs mm -hmm. that we had back home. Yeah. And back, back in Alabama, then I'd, you know, I'd be working and then I'd have to go back to Alabama where, you know, if you were a person of color, you had to know where to go to eat, where to get something to drink, where to go to the bathroom. You didn't just go anywhere you wanted to. You had to know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's, it was very different uh, from the way it was in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing to there. think that that was not all that long ago. Even no. movies like Hidden no. Figures that are coming out now that demonstrate right. that over right again. Right within people's it's lifetimes. It's kind of surprising. And that's what keeps me going to the schools, because I go to high schools, colleges, universities, and all of this is so alien to yeah. our children really now sure. because they didn't grow up this way. Mm -hmm. Right. They, <laughs> some of the kids deny that this ever happened, yeah. wow. but there are adults who deny that, that it was right. ever this yeah. way, which to me is incomprehensible, but um, that's what keeps me going with this. It's a good to reason to. Yeah. Yeah. And trying to get people to read and be interested in books. You know, I encourage parents and grandparents to read to their children. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so critically important because if they learn, if you teach someone to learn to love to read, they will never be bored, they'll never be lonely, and they'll always be learning something yeah. new. Very true. Great advice. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for coming for in today. We Thank really you for appreciate having it. Me. I'd like Thank to you. tell you about the details of the show once again. Opens tonight at 7.30 at the Paramount in Ashland. Uh, and if you want to get a ticket to tonight's show, it's $20. If you go tomorrow, it gets underway at 7 o'clock. Tickets are $30. But for that one, you'll actually get to hear from Mary in person. Um, you'll be the keynote speaker as well, and on and both nights you get a copy of the novel that you can take home. Thank you so much. Y'all come. <laughs> we'll be Great right back. You.